Here we have a linear transformation from R4 to R3 and it's defined in matrix form. T takes a four-dimensional vector x, y, z, t and sends it to this. This will be a three-dimensional vector because this has three rows and four columns. This has four rows and one column. So we'll end up getting three rows and one column. Anyway, what we have to do is to find the basis and the dimension of the kernel of t and likewise for the image of t. We'll start with the kernel. The kernel of t is all the vectors in R4 that t takes to 0 in R3. Essentially, what we have is that this uh, matrix product has to be the 0 vector and in R3 it's 0, 0, 0. This is actually a system of linear equations, uh, homogeneous, um, three equations, four unknowns. And so we want to work on that matrix to bring it in row echelon form. And we'll start by getting zeros here. So we'll subtract the first row from the second row and twice the first row from the third row as specified here. And next we want to zero here. So we subtract twice the second row from the third row. And look, after we did that, we have a row of zeros. So just cross that out. At this point, you want to go back from matrices to the SLE. The pivot terms uh, are the X and the Y, and the remaining ones, Z and T, are the free variables. And remember we had this technique called the wandering ones, where each time we let one of the free variables be 1 and the remaining 0. So first time, let's take T is 1 and Z is 0, and then we'll do the other way around. Uh, once we have t and z, we can compute y from here. We plug in t equals 1 and z equals 0, we get that y equals 3. Then we can plug in t, z and y into here and check you get x equals minus 7. And the next time we take t is 0 and z is 1, the other way around. Again, we plug in t and z into here and we get y and we plug t, z and y in here and we get x and these are the results, but we have to put them in the right order. This one, if I take x, y, z, t is minus 7, 3, 0, 1, that's this. And here I have 1, minus 2, 1, 0, that's this. And these two form a basis for the kernel. And as for the dimension, you just have to count 1, 2. So the dimension of the kernel is 2. That's also called the nullity of t. Now after the break, we'll do the same thing for the image. We'll find the basis and the dimension. But before the break, it's very easy to find just the dimension of the image using the rank nullity theorem.